All right, we are uh, leaving the flatlands. This is Aaron. He is an absolute idiot, and the next few days are about to be the worst of his life. He saw an ad online for a job requesting filming services that'll pay $1,000 a day. Now, $1,000 is a very nice bag for a single day, but our friend Aaron just chooses to disregard some massive red flags. One, the job is asking for filming services. What kind of generic ass description is that? Two, the person who put out the ad lives in a secluded home on a steep driveway. Three, whoever it is, they gotta be a freak because why are you paying $1,000 a day for filming services? And four, he doesn't even know who the person is, like not even a name. He jokes and says, oh, what if it's a MILF that wants to give me rub downs? All right, buddy. Well, what if it's an old dude trying to, I don't know, maybe pipe you and record it? I don't know, man. I'd be thinking worst case scenario, you know? So Aaron gets to the house, sees an axe, that's not weird, knocks on the door, gets no response, and then goes to wait in his car, which is when we are introduced to our creep, Joseph. Hi. Now Joseph has a quirky, uneasy vibe to him. He's a little weirdo. He's asking for hugs, making weird comments. You have a really nice kind face what and he's wearing this little biking fit so you know he's got at least three pocket pussies in his possession so joseph explains that this is his family's vacation home and that he has a brain tumor and only a few months to live so he wants to make a video diary for his unborn son personally i would be wondering where his pregnant wife is and why he isn't with her but hey aaron really needs the money so we'll excuse his lack of questions but it quickly becomes apparent that joseph is a sicko he tells Aaron to come up to the bathroom and starts taking his clothes off. Pubes out, he tells this man to record him in the tub, and guess what? Aaron does it. And Joseph starts pretending to take a bath with an invisible baby. This one actually smells pretty good. Imagine if this is your dad. I'm saying fuck it and running away, but that's just me. After the tub, Aaron goes to get a jacket out of a closet and finds this crazy ass wolf mask, which Joseph calls Peach Fuzz and explains that his dad used to wear it and pretend to be a friendly wolf. I might look like I eat you up. Aaron should leave now, but he doesn't, and we continue. Next, Joseph takes Aaron to this trail to find this body of healing water whatever that fucking means. And then he starts to troll and be weird. He runs off and then comes back to scare Aaron, asks this deranged question. When you saw that ax up front of the house, was there a small part of you that thought I might kill you with it? And writes J plus A inside of a heart on a rock. He also at one point claims to not know how to get back to the car, but then says that he knows of a great pancake spot nearby. But when they get to the place, he doesn't even know the menu, which makes it seem like he's never even been there. And of course, the point of all this is to make you feel weird and unsettled by Joseph's strange behavior. You wonder what his true motives are. And this feeling of uneasiness only gets worse as the movie goes along. Joseph then reveals that he took pictures of Aaron when he got to his house, in an effort to get to know him before actually meeting him. And it's at this point when this dumbass finally realizes that this situation is fucked. But he makes this weak attempt to leave and lets Joseph persuade him into coming into the house for a glass of whiskey. I should also mention that this man has already been paid by this point. So the two drink a little and when Aaron tries to leave again, Joseph tells him to sit down and turn the camera off so he can tell him the truth about Peach Fuzz, that weird wolf mask. And uh, yeah, this next part is some sick stuff, I can't lie. One day Joseph noticed the internet slowing down in his house, so he went to clear the browsing history on he and his wife's computer. When he went to do this, he found Animal Prawn and knew that it had to be his wife. But when he confronted her about it, she denied it, so he decided to take her up to their cabin and act like he got called back for work, even though he actually didn't. He then proceeded to go and buy that weird wolf mask, break into the cabin while wearing it, tie his wife up, and have what he describes as ravenous, animalistic, sexual intercourse. And his wife actually enjoyed it. In fact, he had never seen her so happy. And the next day, when he pretended to come back from work and ask her how her night went, she said it was fine with a smile on her face. And the worst part is, a couple of weeks after that, the internet got back up to speed. Why would he offer up this information freely? This man R-worded his wife, but she apparently enjoyed it because her desire to fornicate with animals in any capacity, even if it's just a dude in a wolf mask, was satisfied. And that is the first half of Creep.
And I've gotta say, this movie has everything you want out of a good found footage horror film. The filming style makes the events of the story seem real, and it places you right in the shoes of the person experiencing the horror, which kinda gives you this feeling of claustrophobia. When these movies are done right, they really move the needle. So at this point, Aaron has finally had enough. He's trying to leave ASAP, but this dickhead lost his keys, which were probably stolen by Joseph. And because of this, he agrees to stay the night. But when he goes to pour the two some shots, he puts Benadryl in Joseph's drink. Why did he have that available? I don't know. But this knocks Joseph out, who is now stroking his meat and moaning peach fuzz. Aaron goes to look for his keys, but Joseph's phone starts ringing. And instead of maybe silencing the ringer or hanging up, he goes into the bathroom to answer it, losing sight of Joseph. He assumes that the person calling is Joseph's wife, Angela, but she tells him that she's not his wife, but is instead his sister. <coughs> and she goes on to say that Joseph has problems and that Aaron needs to leave immediately with or without his keys. So Joseph was lying about his wife, which means he was lying about the kid and is also likely lying about the cancer. That's crazy. Aaron walks out of the bathroom and surprise, surprise, Joseph is gone. So he starts to look for him. And real quick, I wanna mention that because we're only getting a first person view of everything due to the filming style, the tension in this scene and other scenes in the movie are pretty high because you might know a scare is coming, but your field of view is limited, which kinda goes back to the whole feeling of claustrophobia. So yeah, th this kinda freaked me out. So Joseph pops up randomly and says that he doesn't want to die. And for some reason, Aaron thinks it's a good idea to tell Joseph that he knows the truth about him, which makes Joseph get pissed and storm off. Aaron then goes downstairs to find this man in the peach fuzz mask, stanced up, guarding the door. Bro, look at him. And when Aaron asks to leave, Joseph just starts shaking his head, growling, and moving his body all sexually and shit. Stop. Use a freaky Stop ass it. nigga! Stop it. Fuck you mean. Aaron then charges full force at Joseph and the camera just shuts off and he runs away. I'm assuming Joseph didn't put up that much of a fight. We return to Aaron watching a video of Joseph dragging trash bags up a hill, which Joseph sent to his house, which means Joseph knows where Aaron lives. How do you even let that happen? But Aaron decides to not call the police and just act like none of this happened. Stupid. Then Joseph really starts trolling. He sends Aaron another package that has a locket with their pictures in it, which causes Aaron to finally call the police. But because he knows literally nothing about Joseph, including his full name, they can't do anything. Another night he hears weird noises in his house and goes to investigate. Is anybody here? Do you really expect someone to come out and say, yes, I'm here? We then see Joseph standing at the door ominously, but he runs away before Aaron can see him. Aaron goes outside to look around, for some reason, and just finds some knocked over trash and thinks that it's raccoons. Later that same night, Joseph breaks into the house and starts recording Aaron. This man pissed in the bed, which is crazy, and Joseph cuts off some of his hair. In the morning, Aaron finds one more video from Joseph by his bed, where he apologizes and asks to meet at a public lake so they can get closure. And this loser actually decides to take him up on the offer. So he gets there and leaves the camera recording in his car just in case. And this dumbass decides to sit on a bench facing the lake. So Joseph just comes up from behind him, puts the peach fuzz mask on, and offs him with an axe. We then go to Joseph who's recording himself watching the footage from Aaron's camera and even he admits that Aaron is stupid. Why didn't you at least look behind you? I mean, it just seemed dumb that you would just sit there. He puts a DVD of Aaron's death in a closet with his other victims as he's on a call with another videographer that responded to one of his ads. Only this time, instead of Joseph, he goes by Bill. 